Here is Stainless. If you look him up on any wiki, your first reaction might be, this Genshin Impact 3.6 update goes crazy, but your second reaction after reading his skills would be, what did I just read? And even if you did comprehend everything because you're a professional Arknights gamer, there's like a billion other smaller things that he has going on that the skill descriptions don't mention. So yeah, I'm here to hopefully clarify everything. You're welcome, by the way. You need a prototype tester for your latest invention? Is it safe? I mean, I don't know how I feel about you not having any safety gear for me to wear, but if it's safe, surely nothing can go wrong. Stainless is an artificer supporter, like the really loud one and the one no one cares about. These guys are supporters that are only placeable on melee tiles, and they come with a special summon that changes depending on which skill they're using. Kinda like the blue woman, but instead of summons that appear as stat sticks, they're built for utility. In fact, artificers are practically pure utility, except for Stainless's third skill that we'll get to later. Stainless himself actually has decently tanky stats with 2.7k HP and 460 defense at E2 max level and trust, but his attack is only a measly 600. His skills don't increase his attack that much either, and that 1.5 second attack interval doesn't make it any better, so don't expect Stainless to be doing the carrying. It's fine, it's fine, everything's gonna be alright, just, just calm down, you know. Just cause he doesn't do damage doesn't mean you wasted your mats and resources pulling and raising him, okay? Stainless's first talent gives him three devices on deployment and he can only hold up to three. This means if you run out of summons, you can retreat and redeploy him to immediately get three back. But Stainless's skills grant him a device so you won't be needing to do this too often. Despite holding up to three cat androids, you can only deploy two at a time on both open ranged and melee tiles for S1 and S2. S3 is limited to only melee tiles. His second talent gives a pretty high chance to recycle the device back if it breaks down in the eight surrounding tiles of him. The only correct way to use Stainless is to abuse the hell out of his summons, and just like an iPhone, they destroy themselves quite easily, so this talent is a good way to save on repair costs. In general, his talents aren't really anything special, but artificers are carried by their skills anyways, since those actually affect the function of the summons. Stainless, this is a toaster. Wait, were you trying to shove me into a toaster? Alright, well, let's see the next one then. Stainless's first skill makes his devices buff the operator they're pointing towards at 12% more base attack. When the skill is active, Stainless gets another summon, his attacks deal twice the damage, and the buff on the robot is increased to 4 times, meaning it's an added 48% instead of 12%. Even though Stainless does twice the damage, his attacks still aren't that good. Bro barely makes it past high defense, so if you're bringing the skill, it's Definitely not for Stainless himself. The most noteworthy thing about this skill is that the device buff stacks, so you can increase a certain operator's attack by 96%, since remember, you can only have two summons on the field at any given time. You don't have to be a genius to figure out that 96% attack is a lot, and Stainless has a lot of advantages compared to his competitor buffer, who is Warfarin. The biggest upside of using the skill over Warf S2 is the fact that you don't have to deal with Warfarin RNG, or at least some whack-ass placement or facing to minimize Warfarin RNG. There's the obvious benefit to Stainless's 96% buff being stronger than Warfarin's 90%, but the extra 6% isn't really gonna make much of a difference most of the time. You can also retreat and redeploy devices practically anywhere around the map too since they have a short redeployment time, so setting up for a second round of steroids will be a lot faster with Stainless than Warfarin's 1 minute redeployment time. There's a lot of benefits to using Stainless S1, but Warfarin still has her healing and she's also hella droppable, which is pretty significant only being 10 seconds away from injecting an operator in her range with a protein shake. Meanwhile, Stainless needs 25 seconds from his deployment to do some muscle shock therapy. Stainless's second skill makes his devices give 1 SP every 3.5 seconds. When you activate his skill, he gets some attack and defense and attacks enemies equal to block count. The devices up their SP battery to 1 SP every 2 seconds. At the end of the skill, Stainless gains 1 device. If you read the skill, it says that the HP loss is doubled, and you might be wondering where the hell HP loss is even mentioned in the skill, and it's not anywhere. 
You have to look this up on PRTS and shout out to their beautiful souls for data mining literally everything. If the skill isn't active, the devices lose 0.4% of their HP per second, and when it is active, they lose 0.8%. The HP drain is small enough to the point where you can get two skill cycles in, which is basically another two devices, and a second talent gives a chance to recycle destroyed summons, so unless you're doing some schizophrenic device retreating and redeploying, you shouldn't worry too much about running out of SP batteries. Just like his first skill, you can stack Stainless's summon buffs so that your targeted operator gets 2 SP per 2 seconds. In general, this skill is pretty basic for the fact that it's just an SP battery. Use it if you need more SP. Again, the added attack to Stainless doesn't do much. It's worse than his first skill, only letting him do decent against medium defense enemies. Stainless becomes unexpectedly tanky though, with over 700 defense, so at least he got something out of the stat buffs. Now for this mess of a skill. Stainless's third skill has a lot of mechanics to play around with, and if you're pulling for him, it's probably because of this skill. It lets his devices be able to be attacked by other operators, but the attacks won't deal damage to the turret. After being hit 5 times, the devices will do 300% physical damage of Stainless's attacks to a targeted enemy, and there's a small AoE that will do half of that damage. Every time the turret fires its big shot from Beltarune, it will lose 2.5% of its HP, meaning the devices can hold up to 40 bite and blasts. When the skill is active, Stainless gets attack and attack speed, which, as with the previous skills, aren't too useful if you're looking at him to deal damage. If you thought this would be the end of hidden Stainless features, you'd be very wrong. Stainless can attack his own turrets, which is what the attack speed is for obviously, but if artificer operators such as the man himself hit the devices, they heal them for 1% HP per hit. The devices have a taunt level of negative 2, so they're basically the lowest priority, meaning operators will prefer to target enemies in their range over the turret. For some reason, the summons also have a slapped on talent that reduces physical damage taken by 20% to the operator that is behind it, which is actually a decent amount of damage reduction. Operators with multi-hit will have all their hits counted toward the Baja Blast charge, so for example, Exe with her S3 will instantly get the turret bar to full every time she attacks it, but Weedy's true damage tick per second on her S3 doesn't charge them. Since operators can attack the device, this skill mostly benefits operators with any on-attack effects. You can be straightforward and go for Thorns or Chongyue skill charging, which is a really big help for them. You can also pseudo extend the range of operators like Chen, allowing them to charge the turret so the turret can hit other enemies. But you can also be very liberal with the definition of on attack effect. Ox dying because there's no enemies in place for him to hit? Well, now he has something to constantly hit and shouldn't die unless RNG specifically hates you in particular. Blemishine S3 has massive healing, but too bad there's no enemies in range for her to hit fixed. And now every operator in her range is practically invulnerable unless they're getting one shot. The way the devices work is that they're counted as enemies, and this opens an entire can of worms that I'm not ready to finish. You remember that they have negative 2 taunt, right? Well, Steward has a talent that makes him target the enemy with the highest defense in his range, and guess how much defense the turrets have. A whopping 2000, for no particular reason by the way, because they have 100% damage reduction anyways. So, if you place a turret in Steward's range, he will always target it, even if there are other enemies in his range. You know how Passenger S3 spawns a lightning storm on the enemy with the highest max HP in his range? Well, considering the turrets don't lose a lot of HP for firing shots, they'll be the main target of Passenger's Wrath. There is an entire ass iceberg of stainless quirks, and I'm only here to get you started on the stainless S3 lapping. Just know that this skill has a lot of creativity and nuances. The uh, something something should be pulled moment. Honestly, Stainless is kinda M9 worthy, but that's whale speak, so go with S3 M3 first, because that's his signature skill. S1 M3 is probably the last skill you should mastery if you plan on raising Warfarin. Anyways, that's about it from me. Goodbye. Stainless, this is a microwave. I am not stepping into a microwave. You wanna try it, Amiya?